Okay, thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, this is Partners for Progressive's web, Partners for Progressive Israel's webinar, Bring Them Home, it was End the War, and it's a conversation with leaders of the Begin Gate protests. Uh, I wanted to say hi to everyone joining us from the US, from Israel, from Palestine, other places in the world. This is Partners for Progressive Israel's latest uh, in its webinar series, Conversations with Israel and Palestine. My name is Ron Skolnick. I organize these webinars on behalf of Partners for Progressive Israel. Uh, today's discussion moderator will be Partners for Progressive Israel's Executive Director, Rabbi Margot Yuz Robinson. Before I hand it over to Margot, I will note that Partners for Progressive Israel is an American not-for-profit dedicated to the achievement of a durable and just peace between Israel and its neighbors, and that includes an end to Israel's occupation based on a two-state solution. Partners supports Israelis working to ensure social justice, civil rights, Jewish Arab partnership, and equality for all of Israel's inhabitants. The organization seeks to deepen Americans' understanding of Israel's and Palestine's complexities so that they can better advocate for a progressive future for all the inhabitants of the region. Uh, we're glad to be bringing this webinar to you for free. If you appreciate its content and if you are able, uh, please visit progressiveisrael.org, and if you can, make a contribution so there will be more programming like this. A uh, quick note about upcoming programming. Partners of Progressive Israel is about to release uh, its uh, quarterly e-zine, Israel Horizons, that should be coming out in uh, towards the end of June, first week of July, and uh, I'll have a, a piece there on um, our president, Paul Sham, will have a piece there, and there'll be plenty of other stuff. Um, book reviews and and other pieces. So uh, check that out when it comes out. Uh, quick note about the chat and about the Q and A. The chat will be open uh, during our session today, but the chat is not the place. If you have a question for the panelists, please put it in the Q and A. Uh, the chat is for interaction uh, amongst audience members. It's not going to be monitored for questions. So uh, again, if you do have a question and, and want it uh, answered or related to, please put that, use the Q&A function and put it in there. Um, now let me introduce the, today's panel in brief uh, and then we'll get underway. Um, Yifat Calderon, who I see is now joining us. Uh, Yifat Calderon is the cousin and best friend of Oprah Calderon who was kidnapped by Hamas on October 7th, along with two of his children. While his children were released in the first hostage deal, Ophel remains captive. Ifad has emerged as a leader in the daily protest at Begin Gate in Tel Aviv, advocating for a hostage deal and an end to the war. Zahiro Shaharmor has become a prominent voice demanding an immediate hostage deal. He actively participates in and leads the ongoing protests at Begin Gate, emphasizing the urgency of securing the release of all hostages and bringing an end to the war. Zahiro's uncle, Avraham Munder, was kidnapped by Hamas terrorists on October 7th. Three of his family members were also kidnapped and returned in the first hostage deal, while his cousin, sadly, was killed. And uh, our third panelist will be joining us soon, but not just yet, but I'll introduce her nonetheless, is Ayala Metzger. She is one of the most out outspoken activists calling for a hostage deal, and she criticizes the Netanyahu government's handling of the situation. Her father-in-law, Yoram Metzger, was a, among the hostages taken and tragically announced dead last month. Ayala is a prominent leader in the family's protests at Begin Gate, advocating for the return of the hostages and holding Israel's government accountable. Uh, finally, our moderator is Rabbi Margot Yuz Robinson, the executive director of Partners for Progressive Israel. Ordained by the Jewish Theological Seminary in 2021, Rabbi Yuz Robinson also holds an MA in Midrash, as well as an advanced certificate in interreligious studies from the Ecumenical Institute at Bossi and the University of Geneva. Uh, now let me hand things over to Rabbi Margot Yuz Robinson, and I'll be back at the end to thank you all and wrap up proceedings. Thank you so much, Ron, and welcome Zahiro and Ifat. Um, Ifat, I believe, is still at Begging Gate right now um, for, for joining us, and we hope that Ayala will join us uh, join us soon. But uh, first, I really want to begin in, in appreciation. I know it's both very late um, in Israel right now, and also that the work that you do is, is physically and emotionally exhausting. 
Um, but I'm really grateful to be able to have this conversation with the two of you for the next hour. And, and again, hopefully with Ayala also when she joins us. Um, but I'm wondering as, as, as we start, we'll start, you know, kind of half with, with my questions and then we'll take things from the Q and A box here in the zoom. Um, could you share a little bit about the events that brought you to co-found this, this movement of protests at the begging gate? I realize it's no small thing to ask you to recount the events of October 7th, the subsequent treatment of uh, your families and many other families by the government since then in Israel. Um, but if you could tell us a little bit about um, everything that's happened in the last uh, several months to sort of set the scene for us. If I, do you want to start or shall I go first? Okay, I guess this means that I'll go first. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Zahir Ohe. I is joining in. Uh, hi, Slicha. Oh, welcome, Ayala. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you. You have been formally introduced just a few seconds back. So everyone knows you. You can just eat me. Um, <laughs> I'll try, I'll try to, to, to recap uh, the, the origins of this so-called movements. Um, ever since October 7th, uh, some of the family members felt an, a need to, to, to speak out, to speak out, and they couldn't, we couldn't find the proper way to do this within the limits of the uh, hostages forum that was formed a few days after. Because, and I've, I'm skipping to the to the middle part because um, and I say this with no disrespect for the, the toward the forum. The forum is so-called inclusive. He, the forum should take into account the the different uh, uh, views of different family members, okay? Uh, by doing so, it, it tries to keep away from, let's say, controversial uh, statements. And we couldn't find ourselves saying what we needed to say, what we had the urge and the, I might say even the rage to say uh, from within the, the, the forum's limits. And, I think all three of us can attest and, and that we tried, we tried, and we got some, some, you know, some backlashes and backlashes. So um, basically, it started as as grassroots, as as you know, individual people saying what they need, and and we very very quickly we 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 came to know each other as you know, peers of this, of, of similar way of thinking in most cases. And this formed this group of, of you know, like, um, uh, in, let's say the more um, activist side of the families. And so, and here we are, yada, 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 eight months after, here we are. Um, yeah, so we did a lot of actions. I remember the first time I met Ifat in an action in, in Jerusalem, and the first time I met Ayala, and, and, and this was <laughs> a long, long time ago. Uh, yeah, and, and as I said, here we are. We, we're trying to lead the more activist voice within the families. All of us have... Uh, uh, close members of families that think differently than us, all of us. And we try to, you know, uh, walk lightly, gently within this, this uh, um, constraints, shall I say, okay? Because uh, the, the need for understanding is understandable. <laughs> and, uh, um, but we do have a need, an urge, a rage to to say what we think is really going on, and we don't hear it on on let's say on the mainstream media or even uh, 
No one says it. If, if we won't say it, no one will. Because we have like this kind of, face it, we have this kind of, of, of um, I don't know, gravitas <laughs> in, in, in when we want to have, uh, a, a, when we want to go to, to, to the television, you know, we have direct access most of the time and, and people do want to hear our voices. Uh, so yes, yeah, since we are members of hostages families, we can, we can get easier access to media. Um, so we have been, I think it's impossible to have this walkthrough without saying that, without uh, uh, talking about Begging Gate um, actions, with really, Begging Gate uh, daily occurrences of rallies, which he thought uh, started together with Ayala and Einav and, and other good people that joined in. And uh, this has been going on daily, every, every weekday. And on, of course, on Saturdays, we have many people coming, tens of thousands of people coming, giving us support, hearing our voices, cheering for us. Forgive me for saying, but, but you know, this is really heartwarming for me every time that we that we get to to Saturday night and seeing this mass of people, you know, coming and 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 showing their appreciation and showing showing their support to the to the hostage families and and the the line that we are holding, it's really heartwarming, really. And it, it this is the only ray of of hope inside this dreadful situation because every other aspect of our normal life is bleak to say the least uh there's a lot of funerals we are attending the the, the whole the, the the our families are, are, are crumbling around us uh, it's it's hard times it's really hard times and this really gives us strength and hope and and, and courage to go on so yeah i talked maybe a, a lot but um open for questions. Absolutely. Um, Ayala, Nifat, I wanted to, to ask if you um, wanted to, to add anything from Zahiro's sort of initial um, presentation of, of how we got to this moment. But I also want to note, it's not the same as 10,000 people. Um, but if, if I can uh, make an assumption for a moment of the, the 60 plus people on this webinar with us right now, these are also people who are eager, eager to hear what you have to say and um, are grateful for the voice that you you represent right now in the world. But Ayala, Ifat, please, anything you want to add? Um, I can say hello, everyone. Uh, I had a little uh, lesson of uh, in politics uh, at uh, general, general that um, I uh, learned about um, a group uh, that uh, that work uh, in Israel that uh, uh, from the um, extreme right uh, place um, that, uh, that uh, they put their uh, all their ideas at first uh, and put put their ideas and uh, um, announce them. Um, and we uh, we didn't uh, we we worked uh, with the with everyone and uh, couldn't find our uh, voice, and then I understand understood that uh, I need to be uh, more extreme to uh, if if you want to meet uh, in the in the middle I need to be uh, more extreme if you if I want to bring them home. I need to be more extreme. Uh, maybe this uh, this is what will uh, bring them home. Uh, we, we will meet in the middle. Um, so we worked. We, we, we do a lot of um, uh, act, actions. Actions to uh, to we started with actions and then uh, we found that uh, it's we bring more, more people uh, to the street uh, and that uh, what we wanted 
Um, and now we're thinking again what to do for the stay for, for the next stage. That's it. Anything you'd like to add? Me? Um, I think that uh, somebody got question uh, I'll answer because I think they and they explain what we doing. Hear you, and I, I hear what you're saying, Ayala, about the moving the strategic window, right? That it sounds like so many of these actions are a push to shift that conversation um, within Israel. And Zahira, I'd love to sort of follow up with a question to something you shared about. You said, you know, no one is talking about what we at the Begging Gate protest are talking about in the media. What do you feel are are the messages that the mainstream Israeli media is is not sharing or not putting at the forefront that feel essential right now. What is it um, for our mostly North American audience on this webinar that uh, gets missing or gets lost in the Israeli media conversation right now? Uh, wow, well, so much, so much. Um, first and foremost, uh, the Israeli audience is uh, is not seeing a, a, a Gaza, the Gaza and other side pictures at all. There are no articles about the suffering on the other side. Never, 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 ever. Secondly, and maybe also important, is the the notion that this war is the most just war of, you, you know, the kind of BS you hear every time somebody wages war against someone, this is the most just war of all wars in, in history and, and all this BS, and this is going on, okay? Every, every uh, news channel, in every commercial channel in Israel has this slogan of Beyachad Nenatzeach, we will win, okay, the, the winning, the, the, the military win is still incorporated in every aspect in, in the Israeli media, hey, <laughs> just saw so enough, enough is with Ifat, so everything is, is you know, everything is flowing on the same big undercurrent, which is we are correct, we are just, we have the right to do whatever we want. And if someone has some reservations about it, he's an anti Semite. <laughs> Automatically. Yes. And also, uh, a lot of lies. Uh, it's not, it, it's not, it's incorrect. Uh, um, facts because uh, there is a big war but there is no war there, there is a uh, um just a casual uh, walk of the of the army but it's not big war uh, so there is, no, so there, is, Ella, there is no tanks versus tanks there is no yeah. cannon versus cannon there is no air, there is no army on the other side it's local militias and what we the IDF is doing right now is keeping the order. It's, it's not fighting, it's not waging a war. It's keeping the order. They have control of the land and occasionally they go in and do some, some stuff and occasionally, unfortunately, they get yeah. Okay, but this is not something, there is no front line. Israel has a total control of all the, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a five kilometers wide strip. It's it's not a country you can wage war on, okay? It's it's everything is is again this undertow of we are waging war against a sovereign state. This is not a, they they don't have a one single cannon, okay? They don't have one single tank on the other side. It's not a war. Sorry, Ayala. No, it's okay. So, so the, the, there are a lot of uh, incorrect uh, facts in the media. Uh, the Israelis uh, do, do not know uh, all everything, and the uh, uh, feed from the just from the picture uh, from the uh, Tazoli. Yeah. 
media, media. Uh, and the media uh, uh, is not uh, is not not bring everything so we have yeah. a lot of questions uh, why uh, wh why do do uh, do them uh, why did they uh, didn't they uh, finish the war if they are not uh, working uh, and have a great work so so why they do, they can't finish it and uh, and bring the hostages back um a lot of questions and we bring it uh, to the street um and i think but not uh, only questions but not yeah. only questions Ayala, sorry uh, also like the media all whenever netanyahu has a press release the media always shows it you know in in like dreadful silence no one is asking questions it's just a statement Bibi Netanyahu Benjamin Netanyahu didn't answer one single question of an Israeli journalist for for years and years he only directs his energy to outside to foreign media for the Israeli media he gives it statements he never answers questions. Now, this is horrendous. If people in America, I think, people in America uh, think about this, about a, a leader not giving answers to the media, to the, to, to, you know, important questions that the press have, it, this is the way it goes. Another thing that, that maybe is a, a people in America should be aware of, is of what we call the, the poison machine, which is directed 24-7 against each and every one of us, each and every one that says or acts not in accordance to what the great leader No, it started before. Yeah, it, it started, started before. before. It started they have, they a long time machine. ago, a long time ago that uh, we uh, learned, uh, uh, our uh, kids learn uh, everywhere that uh, for the un unity, you need to uh, stop your uh, thinking, stop your uh, ideas, uh, and uh, just uh, obey. think. Yeah, obey, uh, think, everyone together. Uh, it's most, it's more... Um, um, the unity is most important. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and a lot of other things, like uh, in a war, we can't uh, uh, bring the um, critic uh, criticity, criticity to, uh, to the government. Criticism. Yeah, cr criticisms. Sorry, my English is uh, not enough. Um, a lot of, uh, this is poison because uh, if you can't uh, uh, bring uh, uh, criticism and you uh, need uh, uh, all the time to be uh, uh, with everyone unity so you can if if you have uh, another idea uh, that uh, is not uh, like the government and you come and ask and this is what we found in November I, I we started to ask what is going on so we got uh, you're not okay because uh, Israel in, in a war and you um, uh, you fight against the government, it's not okay. Okay, so this is the start. Um, I, I, need, I, need, I want to say another thing. In, in November, we started to, um, before we met, before this group met, uh, we started to meet uh, our government and our uh, Knesset. Uh, and then we we saw uh, a bunch of people that don't know what they are uh, need to do for the for the citizens. Uh, they they don't uh, understand their job. They don't understand. They need to work for the citizen. They didn't do nothing, nothing. And then uh, we found our, ourselves ask for help. And they uh, they uh, full of tears and uh, uh, say that they 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 are hard with us, but they can't do nothing. What is going on? What is so? Who is the manager here? 
I'm not the manager in this country. So if you're the manager, you're supposed to do things and change change the something. But we found a system uh, that uh, they can't do nothing or they don't know don't don't want to do nothing. Um, or they can't, uh, they don't think they can do something uh, and we don't yeah. have no, no one to to get help from him. No one. Speaking of, I think, um, you know, doing doing something, I think a large, large majority, and I realize as I'm saying this, it's something the three of you know very well, but that a large majority of um, American Jews feel very, very galvanized in this moment around the cause of the hostages, but that the even the slogan bring them home has a completely different resonance in Israel and out on the streets right now than it does in major um, US Jewish communities and organizations. Um, and I'd love if you could just address some of that gap in messaging and understanding and also maybe share what can the American Jewish community, the Israel advocacy community be doing right now to best support your families um, and your family members who are still held captive in Gaza. We found in uh, December, December, we found uh, after a lot of uh, uh, um, travel to all the world, we found that uh, everyone sent us home uh, and say, say to us that the key in Israel government, we help you, we want to help you, but the key at Israel government. Now zero will... will uh... <laughs> yeah. Completely so. Uh, uh, I've also been to I've been to New York and I've met with with uh, Red Cross officials and and UN officials and of course Israeli officials and media and 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 I've been to London and Manchester and and everyone tells us the same thing. The Israeli government is key. The the problems lies there. Okay. Had Benjamin Netanyahu want, and I'm saying this. You know, with all with all responsibility, had he wanted to bring them home, they would have been home already. Okay, and this is now uh, uh, addressing your questions, Rabbi. Uh, um, um, yeah, for sure. When you say bring them all home in America, it sounds like okay. So we're supporting the government's efforts to bring them home, but there are no government efforts to bring them home. Okay, the government efforts are mainly directed to continuously being in the state of semi-war, so-called pseudo war, to keep the citizens of Israel at bay with the government's uh, intentions, okay? And of course, keeping ben Benjamin Netanyahu out of jail because this is his card, okay? This is this is the way the Americans' juries sees it, okay? Like, bring them all home, yeah, we're, we're, for, we're supporting Israeli full force as we did, in, uh, you know, during our, our history because we also, always support but right now we have a government that is acting completely against the interest of a the hostages and i would say b the citizens of israel as a it's whole took us, it took us a while to understand it we didn't uh, start with uh, these ideas uh, but we we found that uh, they say uh, we're doing everything but they're doing nothing and we found our, ourselves uh, see it, see it, but uh, again and again and again, and they lie, and they have no, uh, they do not uh, make efforts uh, except uh, to go go to the uh, to the world and ask the world to fix it. No, this is problem of Israel. Try to fix it here. Uh, help. Get help from United States. Get help from everyone. But this is your responsibility, and they do nothing. Yifat, is there anything um, that you would like to to add? And I know we've seen um, some other folks that many of us may recognize on your screen, also including uh, Enav, <laughs> received the NIF. Yes, card I'm sorry. Yeah, we're fine. So we welcome it. 
uh, they all came to say good, uh, goodbye and good night. Yeah. Uh, I think as uh, as uh, Zahira and Ayala said, I think that uh, our prime minister doesn't really want them back. I think he gave up on the hostages a long time ago. I even told him uh, this on uh, January when I met him. He he insisted that I'm wrong, but uh, we already. Uh, 263 days after the 7th of October and they're not here. So I think he he gave up on them. He doesn't want to bring them back. If he would uh, want to bring them back, he already have, have done it. So uh, that's why um, we keep uh, begging every night not to normalize it, uh, the situation that we've got hostages over there. And we're doing... Uh, all our special and some people uh, call us anarchists because we're doing some stuff that uh, on the da uh, daily life we, we wouldn't have done, but we, we, we found ourselves uh, doing uh, things that uh, um, the media will uh, get interest to come and to cover it. And uh, so we need to like, it's it's crazy that we need to do everything, or, or whatever we do, um, and to 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 remind everybody that we've got their hostages, and especially to our prime minister, and to the government, and uh, because they, they they don't do they, they don't want them here, like they don't want them here. Sorry, um, so um. I want to offer and all the rest will come back home soon, but I can't see it happen. That's it. May, may, not maybe not with the Benjamin and Netanyahu. <laughs> I think he just he needs to like we, we need he needs to put I'm always saying he needs to put his uh, kids and to go home and that's it. We'll find uh, other leader that will will do it because he he, he will not do it. Can't see him doing it. What's uh, there? And uh, Netanyahu, the the yeah. don't of, don't offer is the the Israelis no uh, future. No, uh, the, there is no um, uh, ideas about the day after. Uh, yeah. And That's he uh, 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 all the strategy is to fight, fight and fight and fight. Uh, we understand that uh, with with fighting we can we 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 can't uh, bring them home, uh, and uh, there is no future like this. We, you can't just fight, and you can't kill uh, uh, two hundred uh, two million and a half Arabs. Maybe you uh, you uh, hate them, but you can't kill all of them. And I don't want to be there in this position. So we need to find another solution. There is another solution. Biden uh, gave us the solution, solution that uh, what uh, uh, Trump started. Trump started it. Uh, yeah, Trump started it. And Biden knows that. And he wants uh, good for Israel. And he bring it to, to uh, offer it uh, as a present. And Netanyahu uh, don't want to see it, don't want to show it to his uh, people and his uh, base. Uh, it's it's a good solution, and we don't have a choice. It will bring us a really good future, I think. And we need to work a lot to to make it work. Uh, but it's good sol uh, solution, and there, there is no other. Um, but now the Israelis uh, can't uh, think about it. They can't, uh, it, it's not option for them because uh, B, uh, Netanyahu make it um, uh, very wrong. Not, uh, we can't discuss about it. It's not, uh, it's not okay to discuss about it. So Ayala, we, if we I can said, clarify briefly, the, the it that you're referring to is the bilateral ceasefire plan as proposed by President Biden. Correct. Just to make sure to make sure we clarify yeah, it's, the same. it's the same. It's yeah. a ceasefire and it's uh, normalized with the uh, Saudi. So, yeah. 
and uh, it's it's all the area is supposed to be uh, some something else. Trump started it, and and now uh, it's not uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not convenient, it's not convenient. to talk about it. It's yeah, it's not convenient to say about to 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 talk about it. And because people uh, uh, prefer to kill, 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 kill. Um, it's not a solution just to kill. And we, we can't, we won't bring a hostage like this. And we we won't uh, get us any future, like just killing and war, war, war. So we I, need another, yeah. Was he speaking of war? I, I want to explain my is, Go ahead. Go ahead. So, I was sorry, ask I just want I want to explain something about about the people in Israel, and I think to some extent the the the, the Jewish people in in America suffered the same thing, but maybe to a lesser extent. The seventh, the October seventh, traumatized most of Israel society. I can if if we, it traumatized it so much, you know, when we have memories of the Holocaust that, that connected and everything. The initial reaction of Israel is kill them all. Okay, how could how could we got how how could we get to this situation? We must kill them all. This is the initial reaction. It's a traumatized based reaction, and some levels of society still suffer from the this trauma and this way of thinking. And and it's prevalent in in Israel society in all of Israel society even you know among uh, uh, polite uh, societies <laughs> even there you can hear people talk in a way that anywhere outside of Israel would sound horrendous but in Israel it's normalized. We, there are talks about flattening Gaza. There has been talk about flattening Gaza since October seventh. Okay, and 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 this, I, I don't have to tell you know non-Israeli people what how this sounds like outside of Israel, and it has been going on. Another thing, just coming back to to your previous question, Rabbi Yus Robinson, is that there are maybe the the the, the American audience needs to know that. We are fighting against strong forces. We are fighting against forces within the police who beat us, who arrest us, who harass us. Okay? It's not just, you know, we don't only get support, we get a lot of, of opposing energy for everything we do and we pay a price, a personal price for being on the streets. This is what keeps most family members off the streets because they they can't they don't want to deal with this kind of energy and it's completely understandable okay so also for for american audience how come not more people from 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 hostage families come and speak out because most of the family are deeply afraid okay they they don't want to say anything controversial because they fear that and, and this is a, a a a very vivid fear for all it, it may sound ludicrous to, to people outside of the families but there is a fear that if we talk out our hostage come a hostage deal will be you know pushed lower down the list because of our activities Okay, so, uh, and this is a, a paralyzing force for the families. There is another thing that uh, people who um, are a post-trauma from the 7th of October, or maybe after the war as a soldiers, can't uh, be in a, in a violence uh, play, place. Um, I saw it uh, on my uh, kid that she's a... Uh, she was in the 7th of October in Eros, under the bed, all of the, and she's nine, 20 years old. Uh, she asked to come uh, to help us in begging one time. 
uh, and after a, a, when the streets started to be full of uh, people and crowded and uh, uh, more uh, louded, she, st she just uh, started to cry and uh, she couldn't be there. So I, I, I know that we have a voice that need to be, uh, to be and to be he heard and to be there. And people, uh, a lot of people can't be there, can't be in this position. The effort and that all, all three of you and your, your colleagues are making is, is truly, truly incredible. Um, I know I'm not speaking just for myself when I say that I'm, I'm really in awe of, of your work and your commitment in the face of this trauma. And, and we've been hearing from uh, quite a few people also in our symposium that just concluded about this um, politicization of the police, the politicization of the police, that they're no longer sort of just a, a peacekeeping force. But now that Ben Gvir is in charge of the police forces, that there's really been a change in the police violence on Arab citizens of Israel, Palestinian citizens of Israel, um, but also just protesters, Jewish Israeli protesters in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, and even hostage family members um, them, themselves, that the government is not um, exactly, you know, making any effort to receive anything that you or the other families are saying with, with open arms, um, and even creating, it sounds like, a real culture of fear about speaking out, about advocating for your loved ones publicly. Um, a number of folks in the chat had a question additionally about other pieces of, of um, Israeli leadership, especially the role, as you see it, of Yoav Gallant or the IDF more broadly in this. Um, do you view him as sort of in line completely with Netanyahu right now, or does he have a specific role to play? Could you speak to that a little bit? Um, I can. Um, okay. Um, Look, Israeli politics is is corrupted from the core. It has been, it has been five elections uh, until the 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 current government got you know stabilized. It has been five elections, and the society is deeply deeply polarized. Now, coming the drums of war. Uh, everybody needs to unite because there's a war on and there's a common enemy outside. So, of course, the the opposing voices, the, the, uh, uh, let's say, the, the more uh, uh, human right voices uh, are not heard at all uh, right now. And it's, 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 for, for Gallant to say something outside of the mainstream under undercurrent is, 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 you know, everyone who, who knows a bit of Israeli politics would say it's impossible. It's impossible. He can have some disagreement with Netanyahu because Netanyahu is, you know, he lies to everyone. So he, he can have some personal grievances with him, but he will not... If Netanyahu uh, will step down and Gallant will replace him, I don't think the outcome will be much different. Okay, and this is our problem. Also, Gantz is nothing to be, you know, to 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 trust. No one to trust. The actual politics is so corrupted, is so one-sided, is so blinded to the to the other side of the equation. Okay, let me all remind you that 15 or 16 years ago, Israel uh, uh, unilaterally left the Gaza Strip. L let, let me just focus on the, the word unilaterally. Without, we, we don't want to speak with them at all. Okay? If we need to speak with them, then we, maybe we will need to give them maybe an airport. May, I, I don't know. So we just closed the, the doors. And 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 leave them to rot there. And of course, after fifteen years, you know, as anyone, and I have some some family background from ghettos. Okay, if you lock people inside ghettos, they will try to take revenge. And 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 this is what's happening. And you can't say this in Israel society. What I just said is completely off the charts for, for Israeli media even to discuss, okay? 
what we, the Israeli side, have done in order to get to this situation is completely, you know, we're, we're like, we're, we're goddesses walking on, on, on grass smelling lilies. And, and they're, you know, monsters. This is the way, the, the, and, and this is, you know, wartime media usually takes this stand, but right now it's, it's so extreme in Israel media that no other voices are heard. No other voices are heard. I think Even the true. voices that, uh, that, that speak for, advocate for ending, sorry, just advocating for ending the war will still not communicate with the other side on common grounds. They still will feed the Israeli need for revenge. This is why I'm saying the Israeli politics is corrupted yeah. by the core. Okay? Sorry, Ayala. Yeah. Oh, oh, Ayala, you go ahead and then I, I would like uh, to ask. You me. asked about the IDF and the, the government. Uh, so if I found that uh, there is not a lot of connection and it's 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 terrible to think about it, but uh, it's two hands that are uh, not not working together. Uh, it, we we saw it uh, last year when a uh, prime minister wanted to uh, um, no uh, judicial uh, coup to to um. Uh, Fire, yeah, to fire oh. Garland. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then we kept him. He, people from the from the street, uh, from the democratic democratic uh, street, uh, uh, take uh, kept kept him. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, now we, we see that uh, Netanyahu um, uh, to take actions and take decision by himself, but just by himself and. Uh, uh, all, uh, the, the IDF and all the people from the um, security said something and they say, they say that we can do a uh, um, ceasefire and we can bring uh, hostages and make a deal and he doesn't want it. He doesn't, he, he just uh, keep fighting and keep, uh, and we found that uh, every Every chance we we had to bring to bring to to keep it to to put an end and a closer deal. Uh, in this day, uh, someone was killed. Someone from Hamas. Someone in uh, Syria. Someone we don't know. Okay. And and after um, after a while, I I, I understood that uh, one hand uh, don't uh, walk good with the other hand so it's not a personality uh, against Netanyahu but his um, his uh, managers and if 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 it was a school the school uh, is not is not uh, working enough uh, good enough uh, and uh, in this school people are dying and uh, so if, if you can't bring the bring um, the people back and uh, the hostage and stop the war and uh, uh, keep keep living uh, move move and give other people uh, the chance to step to down the, yeah to to do the the job wanted to ask as we enter our last 10 minutes um, about the response of the American Jewish community. Um, Ron shared in, in the chat, the op-ed in the foreword um, that the three of you published with a number of other families you've been working with at the, the Begging Gate. Um, and I know that some of you are also involved in the We Are All Hostages movement online. Um, but I'm, I'm curious both, what are your asks of institutions in the US like the AJC, the ADL, UJA, Jewish federations, um, what are you asking and what have you heard in response? What are they saying to you when you go to them right now? I'll, I'll, I'll start. First, uh, um, what, what I think is most important for American J Jewish people to understand that ever since October 7th, the government of Israel, of Israel is not operating. It's not doing its job in any sense, not even taking care of the people who lost their homes 
okay? There are like 120,000 refugees without, within Israel have no solution, have no, you know, strategic plan of how to get to a solution. And they are kept in hotels, kept in, in, in hotels in Israel, kept in, in all kinds of, you know, uh, makeshift solutions for, for 120,000 people evacuated from the north and from the south. The north is burning. The South is devastated, okay? The government is not doing anything, anything that you were supposed that you would think it should have done in the meantime. The only bodies, the only uh, 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 organizations that actually work is civil society. And this is where American Jewish people can 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 really uh, uh, relate because the Civil organizations are taking care of everything, you know, uh, uh, normal in Israel. The government is doing its best to move us into this spiral of violence, and we need the civil society to fight back. This is why we 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 I, I we didn't have a chance to get a, an answer from the ADL or the other organization that you mentioned. Uh, this has just been going on for a few days, but we do think that the American jury should understand the actual forces within the Israeli political arena because supporting Israeli, uh, you know, um, without uh, a blink of, the, of an eye is hurting the hostages, A, hurting the hostages, and B, hurt the, 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 the people of Israel. Okay, this is supporting the Israeli government right now is, forgive me for, for sounding uh, uh, dramatic, but it's killing the hostages. Is is letting the hostages, yeah, it's letting the hostages waste away in captivity because, you know, a dead body coming in a coffin is much easier to handle than uh, a live person held as a bargaining chip of course but this is the value of life and and giving up the value of life in this kind of situation will i think tell the jewish people apart yeah for, for, for generations and generations in 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 uh, you know in the future uh, people will remember that the jewish uh, leadership uh, abandoned forsaked forsaken its people and because of you know political gain, short short term gain, and 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 this, if if we won't find a remedy to this situation now, we as as, as the Israelis, the Jewish people, together with with American you know supporting, people, we're doomed. We're doomed. <laughs> there, there is there is no that this is the fight for for the this generation have, okay. The, the, I don't think I, I would want to Those raise my works. my kids or my grandkids as 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 yeah. Jews if, if if the things will turn out the way I fear they will turn out. Okay, no more. Just, just I want to add. Is, yeah, go I want to add to uh, that Netanyahu is acting like a, a dictator. You can't say anything against him, and. Uh, and while the war is keeping, uh, the government um, uh, make rules that uh, make um, uh, uh, undemocratic uh, laws um, that uh, will bring Israel to a really, really bad place. And Israel can't uh, keep to be keep being here in this area. If it's not democratic and the it and the Western country, she can't survive in this in this area. You need to be democratic and in the um, a Western country with high tech, with the the the, the best uh, uh, thinkers and best uh, workers. To, to to manage in this area and uh, while the the war is ke uh, keep uh, alive keep working 
they uh, make rules that uh, that uh, against Israel, democratic Israel, and they, they take uh, money, a lot of money that's supposed to help citizens, uh, help everyone who um, who uh, his life uh, destroyed, and take it to um, to the. Um, to uh, Yehuda Shomron, or maybe uh, a lot of things that uh, you you can't understand what they're going to do with it, like Misrad uh, Moreshet, uh, Moreshet Heritage, Heritage Office, office. another made-up office for some, you know, just for, for political gain. They made up this office. They, it, it gets a lot, a lot, a lot of funding. Yeah. And of course, this funding is, is needed to, to, to help the Israeli refugees, and it's not. You know, the government in, is acting against us in every aspect. In Kibbutz Niroz, uh, one, uh, Half of the houses are broken, and uh, uh, no, uh, can't you can't fix it. You need to build again uh, from the first, uh, and they uh, okay. put and and they put money for a uh, color painting. and to painting and uh, uh, just uh, windows. They fixing so, the windows, fi yeah. fixing the houses. Places that uh, people were murdered, were uh, kidnapped, were uh, raped, and uh, the gunshot in the in the walls, the the yeah. gun holes. I can't okay? be painted over. Is what and, I'm and, and the yeah. government is, is is giving money for for plastering the window and 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 putting a coat of paint. Okay, and 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 on the other side. There's tons of funding for extreme right-wing movements intended to keep our voices lower. Okay? And the manager of all this is Netanyahu. Yeah. So he can't manage his class. Mm -hmm. So he can't be there. And he against the uh, he walk against the um, inter interest of Israel. And this is the, the main thing you need to say in, in United States. We want Israel, we want Israel back. We want, uh, Israel will, uh, will be a strong uh, place, strong country in this uh, uh, field, but we, he, he, don't, he doesn't uh, take us there. I think we're getting to the end of our time. And before I turn it back over to Ron, I really just want to thank um, all three of you, I think Yifat just had to drop off, but Ayala and Zahiro for, oh, she's back, um, your moral clarity and and really for bringing to light this, this is really an existential fight, not only for your family members who are uh, being held hostage, but more broadly how this is a microcosm of much, much larger issues and dynamics of, of corruption and of political intimidation um, and of a real severing of the government from the interests of its people in Israel. Um, Partnership Progressive Israel is a small organization, but I, I will say we are with you and it is an honor to uplift your voices and your message and your fight. And we are so, so grateful um, for you taking the time, especially late at night, immediately after a protest. Um, we're incredibly grateful. It's really been a privilege to, to speak with you and I'll turn it over to Ron. Thank you. Sorry, thank you, Margo. Um, thanks, everyone. Thank you, Ifat, and Ayala, Zahiro, and Margo, of course. Um, and uh, we hope you appreciated this conversation. Um, you know, I think for me, if you had to remember one takeaway, it's that um, the interests of the hostages and the interests of the people of Israel are, are very unsynonymous, if that's a term, with the interests of the Israeli government and something to hold on to as, as uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is scheduled to come to Washington, D.C. in late July to speak before Congress. Uh, for those who missed the opening, uh, I'll just say what I said before. Um, today's program has been free, but generous contributions are what enable the organization to deliver these events at no cost. So if you can, um, at progressiveisrael.org, uh, you can check out our upcoming programming and make a donation, um, or check out past webinars or issues of Israel Horizons or various programming that the organization produces. 
Uh, I hope you appreciated today's program, and we hope to see you next time as well. And as Margo said during uh, today's session, um, this webinar is going to be on Partners for Progressive Israel's YouTube channel. So please check it there. And, and you know, we, we put this together relatively last minute, and I appreciate all the panelists for jumping on relatively last minute, but please spread the word, spread the video so that um, more people can hear these important messages. Thanks so much. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.